basic functions polynomials. Well, a function with domain r mapped into r is called a polynomial of degree n. Degree n. If it can be written as a sum of power functions, which means that fx equals a constant a0 plus a constant times x plus and now we end the sum with a m minus 1 x to the power m minus 1 plus a n x n so the highest power of the term equals x to the power n then we call this a polynomial of degree n and a n is such that it's not equal to zero well, E0 until An are called the coefficients of this polynomial. There are several properties for polynomials. Actually, there are many properties of polynomials. I will just discuss a few. Well, suppose that F has degree larger than 1, and that we know that A is a zero of the polynomial, which means that f of a equals 0 for some, some number r, a and r, then what we may show, we won't do this here, but then there exists a polynomial g of degree m minus 1. So we start off with a polynomial of f with degree n. Then there's a polynomial g of degree 1 less, m minus 1, such that fx can be factorized, so we can take out the term x minus a times g of x. Um, in the next clip, I will show you how to determine this g, so how you can find a factorization using this number a, and how you derive g from f. And the technique is called long division. So, in particular, we see that uh, uh, any polynomial of degree n has at most n zeros, since f has at most n factors. Yeah, so this relates directly to the property that I can factorize, take out one term x minus a for any zero of the function f. Now I will show you an example of long division. So long division in the sense that for a given zero of a function, given root of a polynomial, I will show you how to factorize, how to take out this term x minus a, like we discussed in the property just a few seconds before. So suppose we look at the polynomial fx equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the power 3 and uh, just plug in the, the, the value minus 1 and you will you will observe that actually uh, f of minus 1 equals 0. So what the proposition told us is that I can actually take out the term x minus minus 1. Yeah, so fx allows for the decomposition, factorization of x minus minus 1 times some polynomial of degree m minus 1, so in this case quadratic polynomial g of x. Then if this holds, then for any value x unequal to minus 1, g of x equals fx divided by x minus minus 1 which is simply fx divided by x plus 1. So now the technique of long division. We take out whole parts of x plus 1 from the function fx. 
So what we do is first we put down, just write down our polydomial fx. Well, in reverse order now, we start off with the highest power and then in decreasing fashion. And we write down x plus 1, so the, the factor that we can take out on the left. Then we see that x fits x to the power 3 exactly x squared times. Now x squared times x plus 1 equals x to the power 3 plus x squared. So now we take out x squared times x plus 1 from the original polynomial and we get x plus 1 as a remainder. And x plus 1 just fits exactly one time in x plus 1, so we write a 1 over here. And we end up with the remainder term 0. In this case, we see that fx equals x plus 1 times g of x times the g of x. And the g of x is now given by x squared plus 1. Now we'll check this in a, in a minute whether this is correct or not. Yeah, so let's check. Just write down the, 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 the proposed g of x and we work out the brackets. So we get x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. And we take all, kind, all combinations of x with x squared, x with 1, 1 with x squared and 1 with 1. So we get x to the power 3 plus x as a first term. And the second term is 1 times x squared plus 1 times 1. So we get x plus x squared plus 1. Which indeed by reordering we see that this equals x to the power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1 which equals fx. So apparently this works. Again, let's focus on the example, an example, another example of long division. And in this case, we'll be looking at a polynomial of degree 5 with a root 1. So fx in this case will be x to the power 5 minus 2 x to the power 3 plus x squared. And when you plug in the value 1, you see that this equals 1 to the power 5 minus 2 to the 1 to the power 3 plus 1 equals 0. So our proposition tells us that fx can be, can be factorized using x minus 1 and some function, some polynomial of degree 4, g of x. And g of x equals fx divided by x minus 1 for values x unequal to 1. So again, on the left-hand side, we write down the x minus 1, the factor, and x to the power 5 minus 2, x to the power 3 plus x squared. Here we write down our function f. And we look how often does x minus 1 fit into this function, starting with power 5. So here we have x to the power 4 times x equals x to the power 5. x to the power 4 times x minus 1 equals x to the power 5 minus x to the power 4. Now we take a difference. So what is remaining if we take out x to the power 4 times x minus 1? Well, the remainder is x to the power 4 minus 2x to the power 3 plus x squared. And we see that, that the leading term is x to the power 4. So we can take x to the power 3 times x minus 1. And this gives us the following result. x to the power 3 times x minus 1 equals x to the power 4 minus x to the power 3. The difference, the remainder is minus x to the power 3 plus x squared. And we see, looking at minus x, x to the power 3, it fits minus x to the power 2 times x over here. And we get a remainder in the same fashion. We get a remainder of 0. So we conclude that fx equals x minus 1 times g of x. And g of x is now found on the right-hand side in blue. 
it equals x to the power 4 plus x to the power 3 minus x to the power 2. We have to see, convince yourself that this is indeed a polynomial of degree 4.